Hello, welcome to another episode of Master Duet. If you're just tuning in, this is the second part of our interview with Arthur Slade and Kurt Kirschmeyer. Special thank you for um, McNally Robinson Bookstore for setting up a place for us to, well, do our interview. Yes, thank you, Paul. Well, here it is. Let's go. One of the most surprising things you learned in creating your books? Hmm. Um, I learned some surprising bird facts when I was writing The Absence of Sparrows. I mentioned something at the beginning about a ruby-throated hummingbird. So, I mean, it's a bird that's only about that big, but it flies 500 miles non-stop across the entire Gulf of Mexico when it's migrating. It just doesn't seem like it should be possible. I think one of the strangest things that I discovered, I was I have a, a series called The Hunchback Assignments, and yeah. in the second second uh, book in the series, there's a it features a submarine. I was always curious about when did people start first start making submarines, and I learned all about this guy who um, lived in Spain, and uh, he made these he he made his own submarines, he, and nobody had ever made submarines before, or at least hadn't done them properly, and he figured it all out on his own, made it, and got the and it had pedals in it, so he would get in and he would pedal around under the water. And Montreal was his name, and he was just amazing. And so I just thought, wow, and brave, because yeah. he wouldn't put me under the water and something that nobody's ever been in before. Now that you brought that subject up, why'd you pick hunchbacks to put in your books? Oh, for the for the hunchback assignments, yeah. I, you know, I, it's again, it goes back to where ideas come from. I was reading the Hunchback of Notre Dame, and I was reading. Sometimes I read two books at once. Mm -hmm. I was reading Sherlock Holmes. And I just thought, what if the hunchback became a detective like Sherlock Holmes? And so that's really where the idea came from. It was just like, well, that would be so weird. He'd go out and solve crime and stuff like that. It's often, like that. often how the best ideas work. It's usually you get one idea and another idea. And it's when they merge that the story comes together. Yeah. Do you hear um, from your readers much? What kinds of things do they say? Has social media influenced this? I. I think I'm starting to hear more from our readers. When I first started out, there wasn't as much, that's like 20 years ago, so there wasn't as much social media. So people would actually write me letters. I don't get letters in the mail anymore, but I get people will email me or they'll, a lot of them will follow me on Twitter or on Facebook and they'll send me messages through that. And the kind of things they say, sometimes they'll say things like, why was there a spelling mistake on page 35 of your book? Or something, it's like, well, I'm sorry, I'll go fix that. Well, I can't fix that. Um, but other times they'll they'll say really nice things, or they'll say it's the biggest compliment is when they say, um, "What's when's the next book coming?" Out? That that's always really a nice thing to hear. And sometimes they say grumpy things too, like, "Why did you do that to that character?" Stuff like that. And my first book just came out like two months ago, so I'm just starting to hear from readers now. It's mostly just through social media, through Twitter, Twitter or Instagram. Our mom constantly updates us about John Skelton's make awesome videos and his cats. Who are who are your favorite authors to follow on Twitter or on other social media platforms? Oh, well, Scalzi, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody is. Yeah, he's very funny. Uh, you know, I, I sometimes I uh, I follow quite a few. I know it's Stephen King. I follow just because he's. He's interesting too because he's he's very political. He, and yes. whenever he says something, uh, people tend to pay attention to it. So I think those are kind of two that I follow. Uh, other than um, I follow lots of brands who are also writers. Yeah. And so it's a really great way to just keep in touch with what my my other writer friends are doing. I've yet to read uh, Stephen King's books. I'm going to next. Yeah. Stephen King too. I follow him. Also Stephen King's son. Joe Hill. Mm -hmm. um, Joe Hills, yeah, I follow him. And most of the people I follow are just fellow writers, and most of them are new writers, newly published writers like me. <coughs> We're kind of all just starting the journey together on social media. 
How much hours in a day do you write? Mm. That's a hard one to figure out. It's just because there's a lot of back and forth. Sometimes I'll write for 45 minutes straight and then go on social media for 20 minutes and then get a cup of tea and then write for 15 minutes and go on social media for five minutes. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just broken up a lot. So yeah, it's hard to say. I think for like if it's a perfect day, if I get three or four hours, which is a lot for me for, for writing, but that's like a normal day. If there's a deadline, I can I can write like seven, eight, mm. 12 hours, but that's different because you, you have to, it's like, yeah, you've got to get it done or <coughs> people in the publishers are going to yell at you. They've got really loud voices. They don't. Yeah. I also have another question specifically for you. How much words per step ratio? What's your words per step ratio? My words, words per step ratio. I have not figured that out yet. Someday I'm going to have to sit down and figure figure out how many words I, I write. Then post it on social media so, I, we can, so you can tell everybody else how how much steps you take per word. So if funny. you they count on word, that's how many steps you have. And if I speed up the treadmill, do I write faster? That's, and you that's can take all the steps and calculate how many calories burn. Right. Yeah. I'll have so to wear, much math I'll have to this. Wear a I helmet. think Tom's not gonna have to. I think Tom's not gonna get this one. Kevin Sylvester. Question: How do you sign your books with a boring signature, or do you attempt to do something else? <laughs> Just want to point out that Kevin Sylvester is an artist, so. When he signs his book, he does all this wonderful artwork, and it's, it's a really an unfair question from Kevin. That's why he asked. <laughs> okay, now I get more of this. I, I, you know, when I when I sign my books, well, I try to say so, something. Sometimes, sometimes I can't think of anything really exciting, so I say, you know, thanks so much for being a great reader or something like that. But with my signature, it's just my signature. It's not a my signature. Yeah, it's not. It's not it's a cool boring. signature, and I don't. Uh, Do you draw anything? No, I, I, I thought about drawing a like a quick little sparrow when I signed my my books, but they were just too inconsistent. Yeah, the pressure of people yeah. looking over your mm -hmm. shoulder, going, oh, exactly. and plus I just have to remember their name while I'm signing it. That's hard enough for me. How many coffees per working day? How many coffees per work? Well, I kind of switched to tea when I'm. When I'm writing, just because I drink so much of it that if I were to drink the amount of coffee that I drink <laughs> tea, I would literally be vibrating. Uh, zero for me because I don't drink coffee. Yeah, because coffee tastes like poison. <laughs> that is the most controversial thing <laughs> I posted on Facebook. So coffee tastes like poison, and there was like 500 people. Facebook what are you talking about? Kevin Sylvester question. Well, pick a book that someone else wrote. That you wish you had written. Yeah. Boy's Life by Robert McCann. Mm. For sure. Love that book. It's it's for adults, but it's written about kids. So I, I don't know. I kind of I kind of always like that that genre. Mm -hmm. Well, I I'm gonna go back to um, Ray Bradbury and say something wicked this may come, which is that. Uh, a book all about Halloween and about this strange carnival that comes through a small town. And I think I, it's been so long since I've read it. I'm trying to remember all the things that happen, but the people start to disappear and, and some people age and other people don't. There's all this really strange things that happen. That's a great book. And yeah, and I, I remember reading it when I was younger and I've read it. It's been a while. And it was just, I thought, wow, this is still a very powerful book. So I wish I'd written it. So we received the following from play writer, direct, play writer. Playwriter director, playwriter director Kelly Jo Bird. For art, how do you, how do your stories tie to where you come from, and how, and how you grew up? Oh, well, that might work for both of us because, but I grew up in uh, on a ranch, and so and I grew up in southwest Saskatchewan, and I think even though not all of my books are about the prairies, dust especially is first book I wrote where I said I want to write about what it's like to grow up on a ranch except I want to make it really really creepy and so that's that's how I kind of tied you know where I grew up and all the things that happened to me into one book. I think that leads to your dream of being a rancher. That's right it does. It does. Good yeah. knowledge, good memory. Right. Then here's the other question. Drew, 
Your work is set all over the world, but is there anything about your work that makes them made into Squatcher? Squatcher, other than art himself? <laughs> um, I think that, you know, I think that one of the things, when it, some of the books, like the Hunchback Assignments, for example, they all take place in all sorts of different countries, and, and it's set in 1874, so it's a long time ago, too. That's and so I, I try to not, I feel like there's not any influence from Saskatchewan there, except there's one point where they take a train all the way across, across the United States, and I know that they're going near Saskatchewan, <coughs> and, and I, I kind of have to describe a little bit of what the prairie looks like, just so I feel like I put a little bit of Saskatchewan to those books. Thank you for joining us, Archer. You're welcome. Yeah. 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 Yeah.